Hey, I'm Kevin, and today I'm gonna to show you how I made this wooden wallet in the KevBot workshop. Welcome back to the KevBot Workshop. Today we're gonna to make this wooden wallet. A friend of mine was given a wallet similar to these and I thought this would be a great beginner woodworking project. You can hold credit cards on the front side here and on the back side you can hold your cash money. <laughs> money, money, money. I'm gonna show you two ways of making these. First, I'm gonna show you how to make these with a minimum amount of tools. But if you do have a lot of tools like I do, I'm gonna show you how you can batch out a bunch of these at once. For this video, I'm gonna go a little more in depth about the tools I am using and how to use them so this can be a true beginner project. So that's it for the intro, let's just jump right into this. These are the dimensions of the wallet in case you're planning on building this. To make this, you really only need four things, a saw, a chisel, sandpaper, and a file. I used a saw to cut out the slot in the top getting close to the lines and used a file to clean it up right to the line. This will make my template. I will use this scrap piece of walnut to make the wallet. This piece is 3 eighths of an inch thick, but you can make it thicker if you wanted to have more space for credit cards. I used the template to trace out the wallet and then I could put the template to the side. I will use it again later when we batch out the rest. Then it's pretty much all chisel work from here. I slowly chisel out the material, and as long as you have a sharp chisel, this will go pretty quickly. If you were wondering, I dug down about an eighth of an inch. On this one, I removed most of the waste and then started working on where the band goes. Anytime you are chopping down and going with the grain, you have to be very careful because it is very easy to split the wood, like I did right here. Luckily, this piece had room for another on the other side, so I can just start over. These are so easy that it didn't take me long to get back where I was. Now this one looks pretty gnarly because I chipped out some and had to repair it, but with enough sanding this will clean it up. After a bunch of sanding I can trim the edges to its final size. From there, I can do a final sanding and I used a file to get to the hard to reach spots. Now this one is pretty much done, but I'm going to talk about applying finish later on after we've batched out a bunch. This is something you can make very quickly and it doesn't take a lot of material. So this would be great to make a few for Christmas gifts or to sell at craft fairs. The stock I am using comes from this walnut board that I got from the big box store. You can tell it's from there because it comes from trees like this. You will sometimes get boards like this if you aren't very selective on your material. You can remove some of the twists by cutting the board and this is great because I don't need all of this board to make a batch of six. After cutting this, it still had a twist in the board. To remove this twist, we're going to have to surface it. You can do this a number of ways, including a hand plane or have it done at your lumber store for a price. For this, I will be using my joint turn planer. If you've never used these before, these flatten sides and make them parallel. If this is your board here, you'll use the joiner to remove material with each pass until it is flat. After that, the planer will do the same thing but on the top side so that both sides are parallel. While passing your board through the jointer, you will start to feed it and then apply pressure to the outfeed side. Please use the proper precautions when doing this because there is an exposed blade turning and use your blade guard that comes with the jointer. After joining the face of the board, you can hold the face against the side to joint the edge to square it up. As you can see, I removed the twist in this board, but now I have to send it through the planer to flatten the other side and bring it down to the final thickness of 3 eighths of an inch. Since one edge is jointed, we can use the table saw to square up the other edge and remove the extra material. To square up the ends, I used my crosscut sled. Now with the template I made before, I'm going to make a bigger template that I can use over and over again to batch out wallets. For this template, I'm using quarter inch plywood, but I will end up transferring it to half inch plywood later on. Once I have everything laid out, I cut the vertical sides on the table saw to make sure that they are all square and straight. For the bottoms, I used a coping saw and a file to clean it up. This template will make a lot more sense when I use it. 
Before I can use the template though, I'm going to cut something called a dado into the board. To do this, you can use a router or you can use a dado set like I am loaded into my table saw now. This will remove more material based on how many blades and chippers you add. Before I cut the dado into my board, I made a couple of test cuts to check my depth. Now that my board is prepared, I can attach my template to it to remove the rest of the material. To do this, I'm putting down painter's tape on both sides, then I can apply CA glue that will stick to the tape, but not to the pieces. Be careful when doing this because you do not want to glue your template directly to your board. To remove the waste, I'm going to use a router. You can use a palm router like this, or a larger plunge router like this. Routers spin bits to cut wood in specific ways depending on the type of bit you're using. There are many different bits, but we are going to be using this top bearing flush trim bit. This ball bearing will ride along the template removing material and copying the edge of our template. They do make longer flush trim bits, but this one is shallow because we are making a shallow cut. It's hard to see here, but I'm riding along the inside edge with the router going clockwise to go with the rotation of the bit. When you make your template, make sure you have enough material so your router can ride along something and be supported. Because we use the painter's tape trick, we can easily remove the template. If there's anything you have to clean up, you can use a sharp chisel. I then used the original template to attach and cut out the slot in the top. It would also be great to make a longer template that has multiple slots so you can do them all quickly. While they're all together, I did the majority of sanding because it would be easier. Now I can go ahead and cut all these apart of the table saw with my crosscut sled. Before I applied finish, I gave them all final sanding up to 220 grit and slightly sanded the corners because they were very sharp. I then cleaned off the sawdust using mineral spirits. I typically use Armor Seal as a finish, but I wouldn't recommend it for this project. I like Armor Seal, but it takes a long time and many coats sanding in between to properly apply it. What I think is a better solution is spray lacquer. You can get into all the nooks and crannies, it dries faster, and you don't have to sand in between coats. So doing a bunch of wallets, this is much faster. If you were looking to get these done as fast as possible, using templates and spray lacquer will make this very fast. I am fast. I'm very fast. These bands here are just silicone wristbands that I bought in bulk online. They easily hold your money on one side and credit cards on the other. If you are used to a leather wallet, you could always use this as a business card holder. What I wanted to do here was to make something for those getting started in woodworking and pass along some of the basics. This is a very quick and easy project to do and I would recommend it to anyone who's getting started in woodworking or anyone trying to find things to sell at craft fairs. If you like this project, I have a couple more loaded up right here for you. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and turn on that bell so you can get a notification when a new video is uploaded. That's it for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time in the Cat Bot Workshop.